Students will often get tricked by the SAT or SAT because of the time crunch, and the test tries to trick you or make some error. So in this case, do not just distribute this two because that's not the way that algebra works. Instead, note that one half power means square root, so this is three. I forgot my one here. Note that this makes sense that they'll use sixteen because the SAT ACT will not use difficult numbers. Like remember, their problems are supposed to be relatively easy. So we have four. Don't take time to write out the extra step. Just know that this is seven, seven squared, and you circle your answer, which is forty-nine. It's not about forgetting things because it's not about memorizing things. So why can you not do this equals a squared plus b squared? If you just use simple numbers and make a equals one and b equals two, you see that this is supposed to be three squared, which is not the same as one squared plus two squared, and that's five. So always try numbers yourself when you forget. And know why this is not something that you can make in algebra. If one six is one half of three fourths of a certain number, what is that number? This guy had a solution to multiply this over, and have this, and then do the reciprocal of three eighths to this side, which gets x. But here's a better way. The smarter way to solve any problem is to do it in a way such that you have less room for error. So we should see where to simplify first, wherever possible. This means we should multiply both sides by two to get one third equals three fourths x. Then again, we don't like fractions, right? So we multiply both sides by three, and this is easier than multiplying this side by the reciprocal of three fourths because that leaves room for error. Flipping things in your head might be confusing when you're under a time crunch, and therefore you see that x would just be the opposite of this for nines, which is just flipping it in your head once and in a really simple way. I showed this problem before, and the first time I showed the direct way that many students would use, which is to multiply both sides by this x plus two, and what to not do because this cannot be negative two, but. There is a way where you can be smarter about it and simplify early on. So, with this expression on the left-hand side, you should always look to factor first, and you can factor out an x here. So we have x times x plus two with x plus two here, which means you can cancel them and directly get that x equals only positive two. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we have twelve and thirteen, this without doing the Pythagorean theorem is five. And why is that? This is key to be faster on the exam. This is one of many special right triangles. There's the three, four, five triangle, and there's the five, twelve, thirteen triangle. There's also the seven, twenty-four, twenty-five triangle. Do you see a pattern here? If not, I'll explain to you the trick. The trick is that for any right triangle, you can take the shortest side length if it's an odd number, square it, and then split it into two. So here we took the three, square it equals nine, and that splits into four and five. So it's about four point five, but you use the numbers that are the whole numbers next to it, and then five squared is twenty-five, and so you split that into twelve and thirteen. Finally, seven squared, forty-nine, twenty-four, and twenty-five. Remember that the numbers that they use in the problems are supposed to be simple. So, just by guessing, we can see and predict that these two numbers multiplied will be some form of two hundred and fifty-five. So, by combining the like terms, we have twenty-five point five. So, twenty-five point five times, and then we want to combine. These factors, right? Because they're similar, we want to make things as simple as possible before solving. And then we want to make this look the same, so we take a ten from here. So now we have two hundred fifty-five times ten. Two c plus ten equals two fifty-five. Cancel these, and you get ten to the two c plus ten equals ten to the zero power, because that's what one is. Two c plus one. Ten equals zero, and without writing the extra step, you want to just directly know that c is minus five.